love of God, we all want it, or at least we, at some point, I hope, think about it, what it is, how do you get it, I hope you think about it sometimes, the love of your Creator, that would be something that would be good to have, or at least be aware that you have it, if you already have it, I believe you have it, but if you don't know, probably doesn't do much, just like anything, you could have a million dollars in the bank, as they say, and if you didn't know it, what would it do for you? So I want to just get it into kind of like the mechanics of the love of God. Not in some complicated way, in a different way than you might have heard. I think it's very simple and straightforward, but you have to consider because it, it goes against the status quo and what we commonly hear about the love of God. I'm going to go to 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 13. This is in what's called the Lexham English Bible. I believe it's very faithful. I've been spending part of the night looking at all these different examples, different interpretations, and comparing it to the Greek and all that. I'm not a Greek expert, but this is very faithful to it as far as I can understand. I just put it out there. You want to compare notes. You're more than welcome to share what you find. So starting in verse 13, John says, By this we know that we reside in him, and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. That's the evidence. We know we reside in him, and he resides in us, because, or that, he has given us his spirit. Now he's going to explain the mechanics of that, what it is to have his spirit, what it is to have received that spirit that he offered to us. 14. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So, we've all heard that. So he said, we've seen and testify. So if you've seen and testify, that would mean that you believe. He's making a point here. He's getting to the point of telling us how we know that we have received that Spirit that He has given us. So that we are in Him. We are in Him. Again, He is in us. Verse 15. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God resides in Him, and He in God. So it's kind of like another way of saying what He just said in 13. It like flips it. By this we know that we reside in Him, and He in us. God resides in Him, and He in God. That he has given us his spirit. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God. When you confess that Jesus is the Son of God, who came to be the Savior of the world, there is only one Savior, that's your God and Savior, beside whom there is no other. That's what it says in Isaiah and all throughout the Old Testament. It makes it clear we have one God. And he came as the Son. That's how he did it. And when you believe in that, then your, his spirit comes into you. He abides in you. And you abide in Him by the offering of that Spirit, by the offering of that sacrifice. His Spirit came in the form of that man. But that was the Spirit of God. Make no mistake about it. It says in Hebrews that it's by the eternal Spirit that He offered Himself. Through the eternal Spirit. That's how He offered Himself without spot, without blemish. And finally, verse 16. And we have come to know... And have believed the love that God has in us. You see that? He has his love in us. He didn't just shove it in there. He didn't just put it in there by command. It's through belief. It's through that work. Oh, no, that's a bad thing. Don't say work, Mark. Through that operation, okay? I see what he did. I believe what he did. His spirit comes into me. Let me start that again. We have come to know and have believed the love that God has in us. God is love. So that's how his love is in you. He is in you. So love is in you. You see where I'm going with this? And the one who resides in love resides in God. And God resides in him. Look at this and you see that this is true. That he sent his son. The son of God. Is God in the flesh. And he gave, and gave himself for you. He died for you. That's love. That's the spirit of love. 
That's what God's love or God's spirit is all about. It's the spirit of love. It's the spirit of many things. The spirit of prophecy, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom and all that. But ultimately it's love. But love in the truest sense of love. Not like in, especially in Western culture, all this ippy, drewy, gooey Hollywood stuff. It's not that. It's love in action. It's real love. Love that gives. That's why only he can do it. He'll eventually do it in you and through you towards someone else someday, and that's fine. But that's not the goal. The goal isn't to take this as a command and now make sure you love people perfectly as Jesus did. But have that love in you. Believe him and trust him and receive that love. And I'll just read it one more time. By this we know that we reside in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. He has given us his love. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of love. That's what Paul called him in Colossians 1.13. The kingdom of the Son of his love. God resides in him and he in God. So God birthed his love into this world to be the Savior of the world. And we have come to know and have believed the love that God has in us. Jesus is in us. That one we believe in, his spirit comes into us through that belief. It's a heart operation, operation of the heart. God is love. And the one who resides in love resides in God. See the synonym there, synonymous. Love God, God love, and God resides in him. Love resides in him. You have your God through faith, through belief, through trust. Through trust. If you don't know, how can you trust? That's why John wrote his letters and so many other Paul wrote theirs. So you would find out and examine and search and seek and ask. And when you do find out, you will believe if you find out the truth, I imagine. At least I hope you do. And then you'll be saved. Then you'll have the love of God in you. And he will not depart. He says he will never leave you nor forsake you once you have the love of god you have the love of god no matter what happens after that my question is who has the love of god who really believes that i don't know many who do i suggest you seek that seek that don't let your heart be hardened by the world and by religion and by other people's traditions traditions of man rudiments of the world and all that seek for him yourself because it's not about what other people say it's about what he says. And when you hear from him, I'm pretty sure you'll believe, but you got to ask first. When you believe, you're his, he's yours. End of story. Happy New Year. In Jesus' name, amen.